All right, Luke, I'm looking at a long list of uh, movers this week. Um, you told me we're not going to talk about everything on here. The The biggest mover that you have noted on here, there's a company I know uh, relatively well. I've interviewed them a few times. That's American Eagle Gold Corp. Uh, they had some interesting results last year, um, and they're, con they, they, they're now continuing drilling. But the important or the interesting part here is that their their current drill program that is under that they're going through right now is is fully financed by uh, tech resources. So a relatively big company financing this uh, you know smaller junior um, about twenty six million dollars in uh, in market cap. So yeah, in interesting. N no specific news about it this week that would move the stock up seventy percent. Um, but it's um it's an interesting situation nonetheless. What do you make of it? Yeah, it did have a big run last year when they announced these drill results. Um, I think they twinned a couple of holes, or at least they confirmed a couple of historic holes last year. And um, But they drilled much deeper. And at depth, they also found uh, copper and maybe gold, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, and that's that's when the market reacted because overall, it was a really big intercept. And especially in BC, where tech, of course, uh, is very well known, um, it makes sense for them to invest if they see something in this project. So that's a good um, vote of approval for American Eagle. And uh, yeah, I don't own it, uh, but I do follow it. I did own it last year for a moment when they drilled those holes. And I was expecting, to be honest, last year that tech would invest and it did not happen in the first financing. Uh, but now they have tech on board and um, I'm looking forward to see what they, uh, what the results will be. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward as well. Um... They did have, I think they were the best performing. They were the 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 biggest one day run for stock of 2022. They ran like 600 percent, mm. and it's uh, this is the tricky part for me. Like I saw it. Um, someone sent me the news pre market because I believe they announced pre market or at the beginning of the opening, and it was up like 70 80 percent. And I'm like, okay, okay, you know, I missed the run. I'm not gonna buy now. And then it proceeded to close 600 percent higher. So it was a it was a jaw jaw dropping uh, move there. What else is interesting this week? I know there's something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I did notice uh, Nevada Lithium announced a investment by uh, the Dutch billionaire Marcel Buchhoren. Uh, I know that name very well. Uh, I think as most Dutch people know, uh, he's one of the richest people here, and um, but not really a mining investor as far as I know. And he is the lead investor of uh, of this financing of six point two million dollars. I think he's personally investing seventeen million shares at fifteen cents. Uh, the stock is trading at thirty cents, so it's a pretty good deal, it seems. Uh, he will become an eight percent holder or fifteen percent holder if you include the warrant. Um, but he's more known for uh, technology businesses and other type of businesses. Um, he made his fortune in nineteen. 99, I think, when he sold uh, Bakkerbart, there's a bakery store, uh, like a franchise concept, a bit like uh, the American fast food concept, uh, Subway, a bit different, more like fresh bread, but uh, you could compare it a little bit. He sold that business together with a couple of partners, and then he took over uh, the telecommunications company Telforth. Uh, which is comparable, well, which is a bit like uh, Vodafone in the UK, but smaller. And he sold it to KPN, the biggest company in Holland, uh, about two years, the biggest company in this business in Holland, two years later for a billion, I think. Uh, and since then, I think, well, he, he, he has been a serial investor in lots of different businesses. Uh, I read a really good book about one of his investments, also early in the, in the early 2000s, but um, not really in mining. And I contacted his company uh, for an interview and he is a bit media shy. So he's only doing very selective interviews. Uh, so they told me he's not willing to do an interview right now about this, but they did tell me that he also invested in another lithium company called Atlas Lithium. Uh, I think they have been in the news a lot the last couple of weeks because there's a bit of a uh, issue between the shareholders and the management, I think, but I don't know all about it. Um, then I started Googling a little bit and I found out that he did invest in a gold project in South Africa a couple of years ago, also without uh, a lot of information. So what I want to know is, is he just invested in lithium business because he's in technology and he likes the electrification concept? Or is he looking for more investments, maybe into copper and nickel and those kinds of commodities? Um, I don't know the answer, but I tried. And 
Uh, but I did have a nice uh, conversation with one of his people. And hopefully in the future, uh, one day we can host him in an interview. Well, but that that's what I was really curious about. Like, is this one-off because he... It, basically, is this a, a bottom-up investment for him? Or is it a top-down? As in, did he see something special within this specific company? Which would surprise me because he's not usually a mining investor so how, how i mean he him and his team how good are they at actually spotting early on discoveries or something like that or is this more of a top down where he's like all the governments are putting money in this energy transition they are you know electric vehicles something something and then he just picked a random company that he thought would give them you know a, a leverage to that move which one do you I think, think it is? yeah i think i think it's probably through a contact of him because uh Power yeah. One Capital did get a finder's fee in this deal, uh, which was announced in that in that news release. And Power One Capital is a very well-known uh, group in this business. I didn't know they were in contact. I don't know how well they know each other, but uh, if he's the founder or if that group is the founder of this deal, then probably maybe it came through them and maybe they are looking at other investments too. Uh, perhaps I should contact them, but uh, I guess they they cannot say much either. Uh, so I, I think indeed he's looking for lithium deals or maybe electrification, like battery metal deals. Um, this is the second one at, at least. Uh, he did invest in gold a couple of years ago. But what I could find was a bit different. It was like a, a sort of private project, uh, a reclamation project, uh, but it was very little detail. So I cannot really co conclude whether this is something that extends from his gold investment or this is just like... Indeed, like a lot of people are investing investing in lithium right now, also outside of the commodity space, and that's why lithium is probably the only group that really works well at the moment, and not the gold companies and the copper companies. And uh, so, I think it may be one of those. Um, but mm. we'll find out at some point, I guess. Sometimes um, investors like this, you know, when a, when a new billionaire or a new new wealthy p person enters the space, like. Uh, Michael Gentili did in 2018 or 19 when he invested in Northern Superior. I think he invested first in Radisson. I looked him up when I saw his name in Radisson and then I knew a little bit, I started to find out a little bit about his background. And then I saw him invest in Northern Superior, I think at three or five cents or something. And I bought stock at seven cents and that stock went to $1.50. So sometimes when a new wealthy individual enters, the commodities business or the junior mining space and this person starts making a number of investments you get a bit of a hype around that person and i was trying to find out um, if he would be one of those who would make a series of investments in companies because that could then you know every time uh, cause a sort of buying spree uh, this company went up from 15 cents to 30 cents but it was already up at 30 when they announced it so I wouldn't exclude the possibility that his investments will every time cause a bit of a buying spree, uh, but that's often a temporary thing, uh, hmm. as as I have experienced it with other people. So you're saying he might be the new Eric Sprout? <laughs> well, that was uh, that was the reason I wanted to talk to him to find out if he would become one of those types, uh, and those types I mean Eric Sprout, Ross Beatty, Gentili. Uh, you know, you have a num only a number of people with that caliber in this business. And if he would start investing in five or 10 of those deals, like he did this week, then he could become such a person. And I doubt it, but uh, you never know. And that's why I wanted to talk to him. Uh, but he didn't, uh, he wasn't interested for now. Mm. Well, but it's interesting because he just doesn't have that same background. Like he's a, a, a deep value investor, as you explained with his previous ventures. And it, it it's just the way the, the thing that I want to make out of this is is this a, a sentiment shift on a larger level where we're going to see that more from other people, not specifically him, but richer, you know, better off, uh, wealthier, deep value investors, finally figuring out that the deep value is the only deep value to be found, or most of the deep value. Let's not say the only because it's not true. Most of deep value is to be found within the mining and exploration space. Is this is this a sentiment shift or is this a one-off? That's why I'm wondering. Yeah, most. yeah, that's a very interesting question. Of course, I cannot answer it, but I also wonder uh, at what point will, for example, copper investments or nickel investments become? Right now, it's very popular. We see uh, BHP and Rio Tinto invest in. Companies like Midland and other small 
juniors that we have been uh, looking at for many years. And these companies are investing in, in nickel projects that we probably didn't know about that are sitting in portfolios. Uh, but that's still within the mining sphere. Will people like Marcel Buchhorn uh, and other billionaires and other strategic start investing as well in our business? Because that indeed could, could really change things. Uh, yeah, I don't have the answer to it, but uh, it, it is, it, it's probably a positive sign that he invests in these businesses. But how much we can make of it right now uh, probably takes a bit more time to find out. Um, maybe this is just a one-off or maybe it is a, an initial sign. All right. Well, I think that's the interesting stuff that we could talk about this week. Is there anything else that you want to add here? Um. Not really, because I didn't really have the time. I was traveling this week um, to really look into a lot of news releases. Um, I did notice Dynasty Gold with an amazing drill hole of uh, 74 meters at 8 grams gold. This is an extension. I think that the hole was already released, and they have assayed another 20 meters or so. It's a bit of a funny company. They, they were a bit promotional, I think, in the initial release. They had to... Um, the TSX V asked them or ordered them to make a new release to clarify their release. There were some things not right in how they uh, in how they re press released it. Now they come with this news. Rob McEwen invested in their financing, which is a positive sign, I guess. I don't know many of the people involved in the company. I think there's one or two people from who work for Barrick, but you know. A lot of people work for Barrick, so it's not always necessarily <laughs> necessarily uh, an amazing sign. Uh, but holes like this you don't see very often. 74 meters at 8 grams gold. And this is a company of $20 million uh, with, with a financing closed and McEwen uh, in the register. So I don't know enough about this company to really say this is an opportunity. I didn't buy it myself. I did buy it in the initial release just as a bit of a trade. I sold it. And I don't own it right now. Um, I've been reading a little bit about it, but I cannot really conclude yet. Is this a discovery? Is this twinning something? Uh, is this? I, I don't really know what this means, but it is pretty spectacular. You don't often see these type of holes, especially from these small companies. So I will have to do some more work. And uh, anyone who knows more about it than me, uh, feel free to tell me about it because uh, I'm interested.